Hey, 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 my name is Dawson Perkins, um, and I am so excited and thrilled to get to be with you. I am the, I get the cr incredible privilege uh, of being the grandson of Pastor Hal Perkins. Hey, can we give it up for him super quick? Come on. Oh, Poppy, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Guys, I want you to know uh, that, that what you are receiving this weekend is treasure. That what he is imparting into you um, has has been birthed in hours upon hours upon hours with Jesus and a genuine yearning to not only not 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 only theoretically like know how Jesus lived but to practically understand how Jesus lived and that oh my goodness if if Jesus never did anything apart from his father and I'm called to be as perfect like he's perfect then that I must never do anything apart from my father and that means that I must even think according to my father's thoughts and it's and it's a beautiful deep deep love for Jesus um that I look up to in a way that I I mean honestly like like he lives like Jesus in the most authentic genuine way uh, we get the privilege of talking every Saturday morning, uh, and I'm so I'm, I'm so thankful for that. Um, and I just I, I want you to know that what you are receiving this weekend uh, is it's beautiful and it's powerful and it's necessary. Um, and I'm honored to get to be speaking to you. Uh, as you can tell, you know, like who's the kid? I'm 18 years old, um, and I, I I'm I'm honored. I'm thrilled. I'm blown away uh, that I get the privilege to be with you um, digitally. Uh, I am right now. Uh, on vacation with my family in beautiful South Carolina, uh, but I will get the I'll get the privilege of being at the third one, um, just to be able to soak and learn. And so I'm I'm so excited. I'm so thrilled. I'm honored. Um, all right, all right, all right, all right. So we pray. Would you mind praying with me? Come on, Jesus, we love you. Come on, would you just even tell him how much you love him? Jesus, we celebrate you. We celebrate your activity. Jesus, I celebrate your activity at the DB at the DBJ retreat even right now. Even as it's it's coming in future weeks. Jesus, I celebrate what you what you are doing. Would you just even thank him? Would you thank him for his activity? Would you remember the moments where he's spoken to you? Come on, would you just even even right now, would you just audibly, literally audibly in that room, would you just start to thank him? Jesus, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on, don't 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 forget what he's done. Don't forget what he said. Thank him for the moments where he's spoken to you, where he's inspired you. Jesus, we celebrate your activity. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We ask for more. We ask for more in the name of Jesus. Come on, would you just even... I, I, I'm not fully sure how prayer works, uh, and so I know that I'm recording this weeks before, but, but would you just even pray for me? Would you just pray that I would effectively communicate the words of heaven to you? That even just like Jesus, I, I would say nothing of my own accord. Jesus, I, I, I don't want any message to come across except strictly what comes directly from your mouth. So if it's me, I ask Holy Spirit that you would get rid of it. I treasure you. We delight in you. You are everything. We love you. In Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Well, just a little bit about me. Uh, I am a pastor's kid. I'm a pastor's kid. Pastor's kid, pastor's kid, fourth generation pastor's kid, which is insane. Thank you, Jesus. I'm blown away. Uh, my grandpa raised my dad really, 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 really well. Uh, he wrote a book called just, uh, If Jesus Were a Parent, you know, be, he, he had it figured out. I'm just kidding. Um, but literally, like, like, I mean, honestly, I, I grew up. Uh, watching my dad lead young people um, and he led a movement called desperation in Colorado Springs and so I grew up around that and from my, my very earliest memories are, are watching my dad call young people to their knees and as the, these teenagers with tears in their eyes as they give their lives to the Lord and, and honestly from from a very early age like three and four thinking man I have to do that someday uh, which is really 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 fun and I'm so so grateful for that um, 
And, and, and in, uh, in 2016, we decided to move uh, to Kansas City because the Lord called us here to plant a church, uh, which has been beautiful. It's called Radiant Church. We've been able to see. I mean, honestly, I've watched Jesus take care of me in a way that I never even thought was possible. And it's been absolutely beautiful. Um, but I remember uh, when, I, when, I was about, when I was about 13 years old, um, I, 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 had, I had known that I was called to ministry for a long time. And I had known that I was, you know, like, 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 I, I had known every answer about Jesus, you know, not every answer. I hadn't been to seminary, you know, but compared to the other eight year olds around me, you know, like I, I knew every, uh, I knew every answer. I had everything down. I remember when I was 13 years old, though, I started to recognize that there was more and I clearly didn't have it. Because when I would go into the secret place, I would think it was very boring. And when I read my Bible, it kind of just felt like a, a really old book that I, that I didn't understand. And when I went to church, people would often tell me, be, because I would, you know, I, I, I tried to have this exterior up of, of oh, I want to go into ministry, and man, that's, that's what I want to do. And I had this, this, this exterior of loving Jesus, while well, this interior is And I remember people at church would be like, man, you know, that, that, that prayer was anointed and oh, you're anointed. And, oh, the Lord's got a call on your life. And, and I almost came to the place where I started to doubt it. Because I was like, if you only knew how dead I was inside. If you only knew how, how not vibrant my relationship with the Lord is. How bored I am in the secret place. How I, I, I mean, I, I, I am bored by, by Christian music and I'm bored at church and I'm bored with sermons and I'm, and, and I, I, ah, there's no way. And then I remember there was this prayer meeting and I walked into this prayer meeting and I, I, I was leading it. Um, which was crazy. It was at one of our conferences. It was a late night prayer meeting. It was right after a session. And I remember I'm walking through these doors and, and, and I prayed to myself and this prayer genuinely changed my life forever. Thank you, Jesus. I remember I, I looked at the Lord as I'm walking through the doors for the session and I said, Jesus, if this is all that there is to Christianity, if all that there is is kind of this fake like exterior outside in, interior deadness i mean i had i had preached about that like like i had preached a sermon where i i literally i mean i called it the greatest show after that movie and i was like you know like like oftentimes we have the greatest show going on on the outside while we're dead on the inside and, and god wants us to take off the mask and i literally i mean i remember i'm i'm 14 years old at this point and and i sit down and i after preaching a sermon on being fake and sitting there and in the most condemning way, like awful possible, was just like to myself, like, you are the fakest person in this room. And I just remember this guilt and the shame of, oh. And so I walked in the doors. Jesus, if this is all that there is to Christianity, then that's great. Thank you. But if there's more, then I want every ounce that I can get. Session happened, repeated the prayer as I walked into the prayer meeting. And um, I, it, it was June two, 23rd, 2020. Um, at this point, I was 15. It was four days before my 16th birthday. And um, I, I, I'm still looking for words to describe it. Because the power of the Lord fell in that room in such a beautiful way to me. <laughs> I'll watch it back. It was, I, I did not lead well, but the Lord was touching me. Um, and, uh, but, but literally I, I remember sitting there and it, and it was like his presence was right there. Like I could reach out and I could touch it. And like, 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 you know, like, like it, like it was the 
mountain for me. Like it was the moment where everything changed. And literally you can ask any single one of my friends. I was a different person in 24 hours. I went from being a jerk where all of this deadness inside had started to come out. And, and I still had this mask of, of, of trying to be the church kid, but honestly kind of failing. And, and I remember there was this moment and my life got flipped around in a moment. And I fell in love with prayer meetings. Because I recognized that if Jesus can do it for me, if I can be as dead as I am, if Jesus can do it for me, he can do it for anybody. And oh, that my generation would get in the place of prayer. And so that is honestly, I, I have so much respect for you. And I wish you could know how much we need you. And this is not me just talking to a camera like, 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 like coming up with words. Like, I am honestly burdened and I'm so grateful that you are doing what you are doing this week. Because when you teach people to engage with prayer, lives get flipped around. And so thank you, thank you, thank you. And my only goal, my, 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 my only goal for this is to encourage and try and stoke the fire of what's already happening in, in whatever small way that I can. Because, because we need you and lost people need you. Generation Z needs you and hurting people need you. And dying people need you because you're the intercessor and they need God. And so um, I, I fell in love with prayer meetings because it was where I encountered God. I felt this call from the Lord to create environments of encounter. From there on, I took the quote from John Wesley, literally that night. I uh, took the quote from John Wesley, give me a hundred, oh, I'm, I may mess this up can look this up um give me a hundred preachers who love nothing but god and hate nothing but sin and i care not a straw whether they're countrymen or laymen they alone will shake the gates of hell and bring the kingdom of heaven to earth and i took that and i said all right i'm gonna find a hundred i'm gonna start a hundred prayer meetings um and so I, I, I've done that ever since. I've, I've done my best to resource and train and equip uh, teenagers to go and start environments in, of encounter on their campuses and in their friend groups, meeting you know at least twice a month. And I've, I've got the beautiful opportunity and privilege uh, to see 60 of those prayer meetings actually happen um, over the course of the last two years. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I'm still looking for 40 more, um, but but I've I've honestly had this this yearning for broken people, dead people, to fall in love with prayer. And so, if anything, I I, I come from Generation Z, um, and I don't know if you know what Generation Z uh, is. Maybe you've heard of it. Maybe you haven't. Um, but Generation Z uh, is everyone is everyone that's like from 1999 to like 2010. Um, and we are, statistic we are we're, we're statistically speaking, the most depressed, anxious, highest number of suicide um, generation in history. We have insane levels of addiction, like you and I believe, um, to everything. Um, so literally, left and right there, there's addiction and it's celebrated um we have this horrendous um homosexual agenda that has run rampant um not only in our culture but largely in our culture because of generation z's yearning for it um so i i, I come from about as broken of a generation And we need intercessors. If there's gonna be change, we need prayer. We need Jesus. We need you to stand in the gap of heaven and earth 
and ask God to move. Your friends who are lost, your co-workers who are lost, your neighbors who are lost, need you to pray. And so there are a hundred, a hundred beautiful messages on, I mean, on, 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 on every type of prayer, on devotional prayer, which I thank Jesus for. Like, go to the secret place. Please, 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 please. Intercede in the secret place. Please, 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 please. But I want to talk to you about, honestly, specifically, about prayer meetings and about the impact of prayer, of prayer meetings, which really are what DBJ groups are, you know, and, and not even re- like, like they, they, DBJ groups are prayer meetings where you come together and, and you talk to Jesus and you listen and prayer meetings need to have, a, you know, like the stereotypical prayer meeting needs to have a lot more listening than it currently does um, because really it's it's not prayer if it's one way. Like that's just, that's terrible for us conversation. Um, and so here's where I want to go. Um, if you wouldn't mind opening with me to Acts chapter 12. Um, We'll go here for just a minute. Um, we'll give some stories. And I just, honestly, my hope, my, my only hope for this is that you walk away with a, a greater burden to only stoke the fire, to go and rally the people that you know to talk to Jesus, because it is the most powerful thing. Okay, here we go. Acts chapter 12. About that time, Herod the king laid violent hands on some who belonged to the church. He killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And when he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. This was during the days of unleavened bread. And when he had seized him, he put him in prison, delivering him over to four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending after the Passover to bring him out to the people. So Peter was kept in prison, but earnest prayer, and we're going to talk about that in a second. Earnest prayer was made, earnest prayer for him was made to God by the church. Now, when Herod was about to bring him out on that very night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and sentries before the door were guarding the prison. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood next to him, and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him, saying, Get up quickly. And the chains fell off of his hands. And the angel said to him, Dress yourself and put on your sandals. And he did so. And he said to him, Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. And he went out and he followed him. He did not know that what was being being done by the angel was real, but thought that he was seeing a vision. When they passed the first and second guard, they came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them of its own accord. And he went out and went along the street. And immediately the angel left him. When Peter came to himself, he said, Now I am sure that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. When he realized this, He went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose other name was Mark, where many were gathered together and were praying. And when he knocked knocked at the door of the gateway, a servant girl named Rhoda came to answer. Recognizing Peter's voice in her joy, she did not open the gate, but ran in and reported that Peter was standing at the gate. They said to her, you are out of your mind, but she kept insisting that it was so. And they kept saying, it is his angel. But Peter continued knocking. And when they opened, they saw him and were amazed. But motioning to them to, with his hand to be silent, he described to them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, tell these things to James and to the brothers. Then he departed and went to another place. And so honestly, because of all of the things that I, I just described, you know, I, I think it's a pretty valid, pretty easy argument to argue that Generation Z is in prison. And many of your friends, many of the people that you know, maybe even some people that come on Sunday morning, probably some people that come on Sunday morning are in prison and they're lost and they're bound by the chains of the enemy. 
just want to tell you that prayer works. And, and, and honestly, what, what, what I got from this text is, as I come to you as a young person, asking you to pray not only for, but honestly asking you to pray with our generation, for our generation. Asking you to pray with, because we need God so bad. Oh, Holy Spirit, I ask that you would effectively enable me to communicate how desperately Generation Z needs you. Ask even right now, by your spirit, by your power, you would lay on, on, on every heart that is listening the burden that you have for, for Generation Z because I don't even know that my words can do it. I totally rely on you. Generation Z is so in prison and so locked to addiction and to depression and to anxiety and to brokenness and to suicide. Literally the most suicide in a generation ever before. The enemy has our generation locked. And what's beautiful about this text is the prayer meeting. Because I, I, I think if you look at this girl Rhoda, the servant girl, which is the same word that, that the Greek word is the word for damsel, right? And which is, which is really interesting because that's the same word uh, that talks about the 12 year old that Jesus goes and heals, right? The 12 year old girl. And, and so, 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 so we think Rhoda is, I mean, I mean, according to the fact that she was a servant, we think she was probably about 15 years old based on that word and her position, uh, in the household. Um, we think that she was about 15 years old. She could have been, you know, 12 to, to, to probably 17, around that. Uh, I like going with fifth, with 15 because it was about 15 years earlier uh, that Jesus ascended uh, into heaven. And so, and so her whole childhood, you know, no, no matter which age she actually is, you know, and, and give or take a couple of years, no matter, no, no matter how old she actually is, her entire childhood is watching the early church grow. And her entire childhood, I'm, I mean, I think if I've got Rhoda's memory bank, like, like, especially given the fact that Peter goes to her house first after he gets out of prison, like, like, she's probably had some interactions with Peter. And she's probably had some interactions with James, some interactions with John. You know, she's been, she's been very, 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 very close to it. And so, you know, I imagine in her memory bank is probably, you know, Peter and John talking about the Mount of Transfiguration and, and freaking out about how going, you know, oh my goodness, he was so bright. And man, and man, and, and, and John probably making a joke, a jab at Peter, like, man, and I can't believe that you asked, you, 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 you asked Moses if he wanted to move from heaven to Jerusalem. Like, that's really dumb. Jerusalem's terrible, you know, and Peter probably doesn't even have a comeback for that, you know, but, but, but literally there's this, that, you, you know, and, and, and she's, she's got these crazy memories and, and, you know, she probably has memories of, of, of John talking, Peter talking about how in John 21, Jesus pulls him to the beach, makes him breakfast and goes, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And Peter with tears in his eyes going, you know, I love you. You know, I love you. You know, I love you. And Peter describing the way that how, how bad that hurt un, until he recognized that, oh my goodness, he gave me an opportunity at redemption when I didn't deserve it. And Rhoda's probably got the memory of talking to him about that. He's crazy, you know, wa watching people trying to crawl into Peter's shadow because, because literally they're, they're, they're trying to get healed and they're so desperate, you know, and, 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 and the crowds around him and, and she's probably got these crazy, crazy memories. And probably Peter talking about, man, Rhoda, I wish you were there. I wish you were a little bit older. But, but man, when Jesus came at Pentecost, wow. I mean, I, I went out and there were Medes and there were Persians. And there was, everyone was there. And, and, and my voice went out and, and everyone could understand. And we all started talking in tongues and, 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 and everything, I, I mean, I, I don't know how to describe it. And then there was, there, there was fire above each of our heads and, uh, 
ah, and Rhoda going, oh my goodness, I wish I was there. And, and you know, probably some of the prayer meetings that she's been a part of where, she, where Peter's like, man, that felt just like it. That felt just like Pentecost. How's that feel? You know, and as a little girl jumping up and down and, and, and she's probably got these pretty, pretty, pretty crazy memories. And, 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 out, and up until this point, she probably doesn't have a whole lot of memories of, 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 of death. Because yes, there's been persecution. In fact, there was such persecution that she probably actually has memories of, of being scared because it talks about the way that her house is in Jerusalem and, and how everyone had left Jerusalem. And so, and so the, 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 the way that, you know, she's still there. And man, that's kind of scary because everyone's leaving because there's so much persecution. And, and, and then, and, 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 and then, and then she's probably got some, 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 some sadness, you know, over the stoning of Stephen. Pro probably not a whole lot, you know, because like, I mean, you know, we, we don't know how, I mean, you know, we don't know a lot of this, but, but, but we don't know how close they were. And, and, you know, Stephen wasn't even one of the 12. And so that's, but, but James has got to be a little different because James is one of the three. And, and, and the early church still has a long way to go. You know, like, like when we look at the story of Acts, you know, like, like, like the, the early church has a long way to go. And the heartbreak of, oh, James is imprisoned. Ah. Try, ah. convicted, trial didn't go well. He's gonna die. Ah, dead. Ah. And the heartbreak. She probably knows him. And then not long after, the even greater level, as you hear the same thing with Peter. Imprisoned. Oh, what? And maybe even some of the doubt that comes into her head. Because man, man, did, did Jesus say on this, you're Peter, on this rock, I will build my church. And didn't he actually once talk about how long you would live? Like, like what? And all of the questions that start to flood her mind. And then uh, as she's dealing with all that, man, trial didn't go well again. What? Convicted. Ah, tomorrow. What? And there's this beautiful moment. Acts chapter 12. The early church turns to prayer meetings. And friends, here's going to be my honest beg for you. I know that this is why you are at DBJ. And so I thank you for that. And I wish that I could accurately express how much I appreciate that. But if generation, but, 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 but if prayer meetings were the answer for the early church, then prayer meetings are the answer for Generation Z. And prayer meetings are the answer for your neighbors. And prayer meetings are the answer for your coworkers. And prayer meetings are the answer to the brokenness. Because the power of intercession, the power of what Jesus can do with just a few intercessors who come together and they gather and they pray and they ask God. And see, 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 here's what's interesting about this text too. Is, 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 I, I love this word in verse five. So Peter was kept in prison, but earnest prayer. And this, this word is really interesting. I can't pronounce the exact word, but, but, but the only time that this word, that this Greek word, so the word earnest, a couple different words translate to earnest. And so you'll see it spread out throughout the New Testament. But, but, but this exact Greek word, the only other time that this is used in a narrative setting, so, so, so to actually describe a story in, in the, in the New Testament, it's Gethsemane. Which is literally the most intense kind of prayer known to man. Where Jesus is so agonized for souls that he's sweating blood and he's weeping and he goes to his disciples, could you, could you not stay up with me just another hour? 
that. It is it is the most intense kind of prayer known to man. In fact, during the Welsh Revival, um, there, there's this beautiful story and, and very, very intense, very, very, very heavy story um, about the, the leader of the Welsh Revival. His name was Evan Roberts. And and it's a beautiful, it's, it's beautiful revival. Uh, there were over 100,000 salvations. If you have researched that, it's insane. And you probably know more than I do. Uh, if you... Um, if you have any, you should go research it because it rocked my world. Um, but but there's this intense story um, uh, about one night during the revival, the leader Evan Roberts um, was so agonized, so so agonized for souls that he and and, and I, that 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 he asked for. He called it the groans of Gethsemane. And literally, there's this story about how on one night of the revival, he asks for the groans of Gethsemane. And eyewitness accounts call it uh, uh, like the most soul anguishing pain they'd ever seen. As Roberts is on the floor weeping, uncontrollably weeping, like nobody knows what happens and it talks about how nobody doubted the sincerity of the man because of because of how honest he was but 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 literally there's there's this one time that 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 i've ever heard of where somebody actually receives some of the impartation of what jesus is feeling in gethsemane and it's so intense for a man that he's falling over and he's shaking for hours on end. And it talks about how nobody even dared touch him because of what was happening was, was so holy and so frightening. And, and he, and he's on his back and he's, and he, and he, and, and he, nobody has any, any idea what's going on as, as, as his frail figure, it's, it's shaking under the power of God. And it's, and it's just such a heavy level of prayer. And it's the same word that we get to describe this and, and that, that we get to describe the prayer in Acts. And I think so often it's easy for you and for me, maybe, maybe just maybe just for me, but 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 to to, to literally to to pray these cute oh God would you touch the and 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 not pray from a place of anguish inside of you. And I think what I would ask of you is that you would earnestly pray. That you would earnestly, longingly, desperately ask God for His heart for those around you. Because part of being close to a person is to care about what they care about. And even in Jeremiah, we literally get this book of this weeping prophet who's revealing to us a weeping God. Cries over his people. And I fully believe that if there would be earnest prayer, earnest, longing. would actually see a change in the world like we've never seen before. In fact, it's it's kind of the picture that we get of Jesus. Because because Jesus' active job right now is to intercede at the right hand of the Father. But but it talks about the the and, and I wish I could remember the scripture. But 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 it talks about the way that, that he groans with longings too deep for words. And I just wonder what would happen if we prayed like he prayed, because if we want to live like him, then we must pray like him. 
And we must pray with Gethsemane earnest prayers. And we must intercede in the way that he does right now with, with groaning too deep for words. And I find this beautiful because what happens here is that prisons break because there's the young faith of Rhoda who is still immature, forgets to open the door like I totally wanted. <laughs> and the faith of the mother and the faith of the people that were there. And when those combine, there's this powerful, radical, radical move of God. And I believe that we can see that today. It's just gonna take intercessors who pray. And honestly, I've seen that ever since. I, I, I committed my life to building prayer meetings. I committed my life to, to for, for myself and for others to, to build prayer no matter what. And I, 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 I literally, I wish I had words. Like I have seen so many things. Like literally, I mean, it was, it was a few days ago that 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 I was able to watch this this lady in our church walk in with with crutches and a cast on her foot because she'd snapped her foot in half, and literally like all like all of the bones are broken. And literally, I, I mean, just just a couple people gather around and pray for her, and she literally she she's literally jumping. Well, like with her cast on because she can't take the cast off, but she's literally jumping saying it's literally painless. Like I have no pain in my foot. Like I've been so, I, 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 there, there's no pain there. Completely healed. Like just days ago. And I've watched, I, I've watched so many things where I'm like, I wish, ah, if people knew the power of prayer. If people knew that just when believers gather, There's breakthrough and there's healing for a generation. And, and I, I literally went back after that prayer meeting and I started leading 14 prayer meetings a week. And I, I, I wish I had words and, and until school started and then, you know, that practically I, I couldn't lead 14 prayer meetings a week, I wish. Um, and and I, I mean, I began to see just all of these little things that I would pray for. I, I remember specifically, I started um, I started praying for headlines of revival in our generation, and and literally just out of this yearning, like God, I want the news to talk about what Jesus is doing, not not what the enemy is doing. And and, and literally, I began to see them, and I and I I'd, I'd see these crazy countercultural headlines all over the place where like where people are talking about and and you know i wish i could pull up like the specific article and show you but but articles where they're talking about how in the middle of a pandemic and in the middle of all of the pain and the anxiety there are some the remnant who are turning to jesus and i remember weeping and uh some of my favorite stories um and i'm sure you know this next one in just a second some of my favorite stories uh i um I, I honest, I, I beautiful story actually. Um, I I fasted for forty days for male teenager friends who were chasing Jesus like crazy, um, and literally on day forty, I meet this guy named Asher Bird who flew in from Hawaii. Um, which thank you Jesus, and literally we get this, we we get burgers together and it's beautiful. And he's like, hey, I want to start a prayer meeting. I'm like, oh sick, let's go. And so he rallies some of his friends um, who all love Jesus desperately, and it was this wide open door to a whole bunch of people who radically love Jesus. And I thank Jesus for that. And one of these guys on the prayer meetings, his name is Jimmy, and Jimmy. We got on the prayer meeting and this guy loves Jesus. Like this guy's praying. The only weird piece for me was Jimmy Jimmy sounded like this. Like I got on the prayer call and I kid you not. Jimmy's like, oh my goodness, where's Asher? Like what's what's going on? You know? And then he starts praying and he's like, Jesus asked for revival. And literally, literally like and, and I was like, oh my goodness, okay, well, interesting, you know? And literally like but this guy, this guy loves Jesus like few people I've ever seen in my whole life. And, and literally, like, 
I, I mean, we began to, to, to text a little bit. And honestly, like, I mean, the way that he, he loves Jesus is the most inspiring thing. And I began to learn of his secret place life. And then I went to this uh, summer camp uh, that summer. Uh, so it was February. That summer, I went to the summer camp in Kona, Hawaii. Uh, and, and I got to meet Jimmy. And, you know, we, he was telling me his testimony in the car. And he's telling me stories of like 100 salvation, 130 salvations on his public high school campus in Los Angeles um, and how all of his all of these friends are getting saved and he's talking to me like this the whole time and and we're in the car and I'm like great this guy loves Jesus and literally literally so 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 the doctors had told him if your voice doesn't change by the time that you are 15 years old it will never change he's 17 at this point um, they said it, it, your your vocal your vocal cords like they, you, they, they don't change after the time that you're 15. And he's like, okay. And so literally like, he's talked like this his whole life. The doctors say there's no way that it, it will ever be fixed. And literally on the second night of camp, we're in this worship set and the Lord tells him not to talk. And he's like, great. So he doesn't talk. And literally like I watched my friends like bump him, you know, to like make jokes during the sermon and he doesn't respond. And it was like, okay. Um, and literally I remember this moment where I, I, <laughs> I look up during the worship set. Jimmy, people are freaking out around Jimmy. Jimmy gets on stage and goes, I don't know what's happening. And literally, like the room erupts. And literally, I mean, Jimmy's voice is completely healed in a moment like that. His voice is literally deeper than mine now. And like the fear of God falls on the room. And I just remember this moment of like, oh my goodness. What happens when I'm in the presence of God? What happens when you're here? And we literally, we went and we worshiped for hours on end in this little room with this piano as Jimmy leads us in worship with his new voice and like his voice is cracking, you know, and it's just like this beautiful moment. We're like, oh my goodness, God, you couldn't be more real. Like, oh my goodness, what happens when we pray? And I remember another one of my favorite moments. Um, just, just before that, actually, um, was I was, um, and I'm so happy that my grandpa gave me permission to tell this story. <laughs> but I remember, I remember it was about October of 2020. Uh, so I had been really following Jesus for about three months. Um, and I remember, I remember there was this one night and um, I can't exactly remember. I, I think I was like sitting talking with a friend or something and my phone starts blowing up in my pocket. And uh, I'm, I'm really close with my grandpa. Um, like I couldn't love him more. Um, we're, we're best friends. Uh, up, until, up until then, we had talked every, morning, every Monday morning um, about Jesus. And I, I'm so thankful for the discipleship uh, and the, the disciple maker that he has been to me. And he has turned me into a disciple maker and I'm forever grateful. Um, and literally, like, so it's a Monday night and Monday morning he had texted me and said, hey, I can't call. It's the first time he's canceled for health reasons ever. Um, and literally like, I'm like, okay, great, weird. Um, I'm sure he's fine. Like it just talks about a cough. Like I'm sure he'll be fine. And then I remember like that night, my phone starts blowing up in my pocket and I'm watching these texts come in and I learn that that my grandpa is in the hospital. And it and at first, like, I thought, oh yeah, he'll be fine. Like it's gonna be okay. You know, like it'll just be a couple days and he'll recover and everything's gonna be okay. And then on the second night, we began to pray as a family every night. And so every night for 26 nights. We prayed over Zoom together, our extended family, and, sorry, I'm getting teary. Um, and Poppy's in the hospital, and um, the news just gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And, worse. Um, and we genuinely ask God, oh God, that you move. And, um, it's so bad to where the doctors say there is a 99.9% .9 chance that he dies. There, 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 
if if he ever goes home, which there's there's barely a chance that he will, if he ever goes home, we will literally have to create a hospital in your house because there's this jet engine that currently is, I think it's 85, he may have to correct me in a second. There, there's this, literally, it looks like a jet engine that's giving him oxygen. It's giving him 80, 8, 85, like, I don't know what it is, like 85% of his oxygen and there's this tube that's on his face always and if he's ever disconnected from this he's literally gonna die because his lungs are totally crushed he's got covid pulmonary embolisms arts um and pneumonia all at once and so these three um pulmonary embolisms arts and pneumonia um no person at 75 had ever survived um in their hospital from any one of these things as bad as he had them much less all three and so we're, we're, we're getting there and, and, and about Day 24, we start talking funeral arrangements. Day 25 was the day where they were like, this is probably it. We're gonna move him to comfort care. And um, it's gonna be it. And I remember, I have never had such a high level of angst in my life. I remember, my grandpa doesn't even remember this. I was actually like in this basement, like right there. And um, I had what was supposed to be my final call with my grandpa. He doesn't even remember it. He was so, so fogged. I, I've, I've never seen someone so pers persistently love Jesus though. He got on every night to that prayer meeting and all he would talk about is the way that Jesus and he had talked all night the night before because he couldn't sleep. I'm telling you what you're learning is treasure. This FaceTime call, as I'm talking to him for the last time, thinking, man, okay, God, I guess we're gonna have to deal with this. I guess I'm gonna lose my friend, you're my best friend. You're gonna have to walk me through this. Have for cry one. And literally, this prayer meeting and this was at the beginning this was the most lame prayer meeting I've ever been a part of because we tossed up these terribly cute like powerless gross prayers we're literally just like not gross prayer you know all prayer is powerful but but we're praying with such a lack of faith I mean we're praying God would you give us comfort God would you help would you give Poppy peace as, as we're kind of accepting, like, okay, we made the funeral arrangements, like, this is, this was really the night of acceptance, and I remember, I remember we're on this Zoom call as we're praying these little cute prayers, and I remember my Uncle Dan coming on, and he says, he says, and I will, I, 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 man, I will forever respect him, like, a bajillion times more for this moment, not to imply that I didn't before, but literally, he gets on the call, and he goes, what are we doing? Do we not pray to Yahweh at this prayer meeting? And literally, I mean, I, and, and he goes, what, what do you mean? Like, if he can just, and stars, like, d d d does he not long to heal? Like, is that not what he wants? And so if we're praying for his will, why don't we, why, why don't we seriously ask him? And we began to pray and it was like earnest prayer. And I've never been a part of a more earnest prayer meeting in my whole entire life as we genuinely just asked God and yearned for healing. And I don't know what to tell you happened between 10 p.m. that night and 10 a.m. the next day, but 10 a.m. the next day, I start getting these text messages pouring in on my phone as my grandma goes, guys, 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 for the first time ever, he's at 75, he's at 65, he's at 55, he's at 50, he's at 40, he's at 30, he's at 20, he's at five liters of oxygen. He is going to walk out of here. And literally just like these completely new lungs is I'm like, oh my goodness. Thank you, Jesus. I remember I run up and I just hugged my dad and we just wept together because literally there's this insane and, and oh, I'm just telling you. And, and, and literally like we, within the next couple of weeks, like he was completely off of it within like two months, within three months, he, he walked just as much as I did three and a half. He walked like 
two or three times more than I did every day as he's like restoring his lungs. And literally the Lord just like gave him new lungs because they said that they were totally crushed and it'll never happen. And I'm just telling you, like I've seen prayer work and all I did was to come tell you, like, oh my goodness, that you would go and you'd rally people around talking to Jesus. It is the most powerful thing on planet Earth. And I'm not screaming because he needs my volume. I'm screaming because he needs my volume. I'm genuinely, it is genuinely the passion of my life. And I am yearning that you too would gather and you would pray with earnest prayer with young people for there to be no, no prisons. I am telling you, revival, like what we read about with Azusa and Wales and the Moravians, it's possible. It's just going to take intercessors. And it's our turn to be the ones in the prayer meeting who earnestly pray. Who say, you know what? I've seen you be good. I'll see you be good again. And I've seen stuff ever since I decided to set my life towards prayer and knowing Jesus. And you will too. You'll see a hundred times what I've seen. So would you just even pray with me now? Come on, can you just even actually, with your vocal cords, start to pray? Start to pray earnestly. Come on, use your vocal cords. God, we need you. We just even start to name the people who need him. Jesus, we need you. Come on, keep praying. Use your vocal cords. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's make this an earnest prayer meeting. Come on, things will change because of this. Come on, what's the healing you need? Jesus, we need you. Come shake the prisons. Come shake the prisons. Jesus, we delight in you. We need you. Come on, keep going, keep going. Your prayers are powerful. This is powerful. This is what changes the world. Money doesn't change the world like intercession changes the world. Presidents don't change the world like intercession changes the world. History belongs to the intercessors. So come on, would you keep asking? Then would you just ask God for a burden? Ask him for a burden to lead people to pray, to get to know his heart. In intercession, you will get to know the heart of God. In intercession, even Moses, literally at his intercession, multiple times, God spares the people of Israel because of Moses' intercession. Moses, I mean, outside of Jesus, was, you know, I mean, one of the most powerful intercessors that we get to see in Scripture. And he knew Jesus so deeply. He knew the heart of God. God actually brags on their friendship. Numbers chapter 12. Jesus, we want to know you. And our goal is for us to know you for them to know you so we will be disciples that make disciples and we will be disciples that intercede for disciples
We want to follow you. So teach us to pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. You guys can keep praying. I don't know what happens after this, but I love you. Thank you. Thank you for doing what you're doing. Your yes is so valuable. We need you. Thank you.